The ju- the New York Mets have signed Justin Verlander. Justin Verlander's tenure as a Houston Astro is done. Verlander headed to the Big Apple to play for the Mets on a two-year, $86 million deal. It does include a vesting third-year option, so probably something similar to what the Astros put in their deal with Verlander this past year, where if he hits a certain inning threshold, becomes guaranteed in the final year of his deal. So how are we feeling, Houston, that Justin Verlander is done? His Astro tenure is over. All of the questions about, will Verlander go into the Hall of Fame as an Astro? You can kiss that goodbye because he no longer is a member of this organization, will not finish his career in Houston. How are we feeling knowing that Justin Verlander is officially gone? I'm good with it. You set me up for it. You get the credit for doing this when it was the unpopular thing to do. But now it is the only thing to do. It's getting over Justin Verlander and realizing what happens next. I I think that everybody should be okay with this. I think that everybody should understand, look, with all of the embarrassment of riches that you have in the pitching department and as it relates to starting pitching and the fact that you are already stacking and racking a dynasty-type lineup for, again, next season, that you can enhance the offense even more, you're going to be just fine. You may have a better team this year than you had the last year when when, when they won the World Series. However, I believe that there are people out there, and I believe that there are more than we even realize, that are going to be butthurt and or officially unhappy now or their feelings are going to make them sad because the divorce is final. The breakup has happened. It was the inevitable, but now that it's happened, I think people are going to be upset that their Cy Young Award winner is moving on. I think people are a little bit more understandable with it on on two fronts. One, you got the World Series title, and this is something that you mentioned. If, you know, from uh, whenever we had this conversation back in very early September about do you let Verlander move on, and you talked about how winning a World Series title might make it easier to move on from Justin Verlander because now you have your second World Series. Uh, you've justified your organiz- You justified your organization in a lot of ways. Maybe you don't have to be as aggressive having that anchor at the top end of the bullpen. Also, how Justin Verlander pitched in the playoffs, I think, might have made this easier to swallow Mm -hmm. for Houston Astros fans. That when Justin Verlander was going out there, each and every one of his starts, it was a little bit more unsure than the Cy Young Justin Verlander you got during the regular season. And some people that like to counter that opinion will say, well, the Astros turned to Justin Verlander every single turn through the rotation. And I would say... No, they didn't. Justin Verlander didn't start game four of the World Series on full rest. They elected to go instead with Christian Javier, and that turned out pretty good uh, for the Houston Astros. Um, So that's something that comes into mind because Nola went on full rest as Justin Verlander could have and didn't. So I think those two things make it easier to swallow from a Houston Astro perspective. I'm totally okay with this. Now, look, I I appreciate what Justin Verlander did for the Houston Astros, trading for him in 2017, being the workhorse and the anchor to a team that won a World Series for the first time in Astros history, right? And doing it in a year where Hurricane Harvey happened and so much of the city uh, was kind of uplifted by that Houston Astro Mm -hmm. team. So I respect the heck out of Justin Verlander. The memories that Justin Verlander brought to this city. It's all great. I have nothing but great things to say about JV and his tenure with the Houston Astros, but I'm not paying $86 million minimum for two years for a pitcher who's going to be 40 next year, had questions in the postseason, and on top of that, you have a surplus of starting pitchers. Tip my cap. Thank Justin Verlander for everything he's done as a Houston Astro. But it was time. Hey, guys, back to the video in just one minute. Before that, I want to tell you about Fitz Roofing. If you got a leaky roof or need a full roof replacement on your business or your home and or you want to get something done around the yard or maybe something around the house, they have the best warranties in the business, the best ratings and the best service. They're going to take care of you every step of the way. Fitz Roofing, making a difference one home at a time. You and I talked about it at the time, and I and I kept throwing out the number that he's going to, he's going to want at least 43. That's just the way... Yeah. Verlander's thinking has went. And until we saw an actual offer for it, it, and rightfully so, you and I had the discussion and you said, you know, do you really think, where are you hearing that from? Do you think it's going to happen? And I related it back to the Clint Capella deal, right? You're only as valuable as the market says you are. So you, you're right. We had to see it and believe it with like hard numbers mm-hmm. for it to actually come to fruition. But you knew that all along, that's what he wanted. That was his benchmark, just like 300 wins is his benchmark for what he's trying to do before he hangs them up and and 4,000 strikeouts. And so you could pretty much read Justin Verlander 
as much as he tries to keep it close to the vest and know what he was all about, and you knew it wasn't the right thing for the Houston Astros to do. And, and I think that it, it, it did mean so much, and I think even for Jim Crane, because we know that they're golf buddies and they're good friends, and he was the only one that was going to do the negotiation. But I think it was easier for him to, to swallow and move on from knowing that he got another title out of it. He got what he needed out of Justin Verlander. He knew that Justin Verlander needed this $43 million a year deal that he probably wasn't going to want to do uh-huh. or have to do. Are you surprised they didn't match it? Because the details of the contract, mm-hmm. two years, $86 million. The two years, eighty-six. like, again, you thought that that was probably going to be the AAV, Scherzer-type money, which is something yeah. that everybody was reporting. Uh, two years isn't the three years, but I think we're like the Astros drew the line in the sand here, to be completely honest with you. I think they might have done 86 for two years. That vesting option, though, where we don't know the details of the vesting option, right. but if it's anything like the last vesting option for Justin Verlander, remember he signed the two-year deal with the Astros, the second year becomes guaranteed if he pitches 130 innings. I would imagine it's something like that, where if he pitches 130 innings that second year of the contract, the third year becomes guaranteed at 43. I'm not surprised that the Astros didn't match the deal. If it was only two years, 86, I could have seen the Astros do that. But the vesting third year of this deal, the option of this deal, is where I think Jim Crane, Bill Furkus, Jeff Bagwell, all of the assistant general managers said, no thank you, Justin Verlander. We wish you well We wish you well in your future endeavors. No, I agree with that. And I think going back to something that you brought up, I think the other thing is, it's the uncertainty of what – we know what Justin Verlander was last year. Uh-huh. We know what just, Justin Verlander was for the entirety of this first year, this two-year deal that he walked from because he was able to. But what we didn't know was what Justin Verlander was he going to be going forward. And, and, and it's a tale of two, two different situations. It's the regular season versus the playoffs. And if it's the Justin Verlander we saw in the playoffs, I could do without that Justin Verlander simply at that price. If that was another year at 25, I could stomach that. I could take that. I could see how that works, and we could make it work with even a six-man rotation, seven, doing whatever you got to do. But the fact that that Justin Verlander put a big, massive question mark in terms of what to expect for him going forward and the price tag went up by $20 million a year, mm-hmm. I'm out. That's one of my favorite things to talk about whenever we break down like front office moves, moves that general managers are making, that a lot of times us and fans, we, we're we like reactive to what a pitcher has done or a player has done. So when we see a two-year deal and like you feel like you're paying for what the player has done, when a general manager's job is to predict what the player is going to do, you're supposed to pay the player predictive on what they do in the life of that contract. But if we only, like, let's just assume for a second that it's only a two-year deal, which if it is a two-year deal, that means something probably went wrong in the second year where that vesting option third year is not kicking in, which means that he probably didn't pitch very good in that second season. But if you just look at it from a two-year deal perspective, uh, $86 million, 43 AAV, the last two years for Justin Verlander, and look, I'm sorry to, to say this, but I don't expect Justin Verlander at the age of 40 and 41 to be as good as he was at the age of 39 last year for the Houston Astros. I think it's going to be very difficult for him to replicate a Cy Young season in a sub-2 ERA when he's 40 and when he's 41 years old. But even if you are paying Justin Verlander for the last two years of his production, last year you could say that he was worth $43 million a year. Can you say the same thing about 2021 when he didn't pitch a single inning? No, you can't. So even the last two years, if you took the last two years and you say, this is what the what the Mets are going to get for Justin Verlander, it's not worth it. It's not worth Back the to money. Back to the please, for a second, if you would, Jeremy. Are the Mets capable of going to a six-man rotation? Are uh. the Mets capable of giving him the kind of luxuries that the Astros gave him? Because I don't think so. And I think part of what we saw was as much as they catered to making sure that he wasn't worn out by the end of the year. I think he was worn out at the I end of the too. year. I did too. And so I think that when you take away the ability, unless you have a massive lead of doing what the Astros did and go into a six man rotation for the majority of the year, I think you're leaving yourself open to actually contributing to the lack of production that you're expecting for a guy you're paying $43 million a year for. Yeah. And to that point to kind of, you know, expand on it a little bit from like a Justin Verlander perspective might be what he was aiming for. He, he might be aiming for the five man rotation so he can start 32 games as Getting opposed to a six man rotation where he's going to start 24, 25 yeah. games. Now, Starting 24-25 games versus 32, does it make them better for the postseason? Yes, absolutely. You're 100% right about that. But Justin Verlander now has two World Series titles. He has the Cy Youngs. He has an MVP. He's chasing the numbers. He's chasing the counting stats. He's chasing the wins. He's chasing the strikeouts. I'm not really sure he wanted to be in a six-man rotation. And I think 
Look, I don't want to put words in Justin Verlander's mouth, anything like that, but I think Justin Verlander would be willing to trade off the postseason success because he's already had championships and rings and things that he could already hang his hat on, that he really wants the counting stats. He really wants 300. He really wants 4,000. Yeah, I think that, again, right from the get-go, this night might not be a marriage set for the long term where they're on the same page. Because I think the Mets are thinking, we want a guy that when the postseason starts is going to be a horse. And he is going to lead us to the promised land like he did when he was an Astro. And I think what Justin is thinking is exactly what you said. I've been there, done that, and I got my jewelry. Now I need to I need to etch my place in the histories and the annals of Major League Baseball by getting the things that mean the most to me, which is 300 wins and 4,000 strikeouts. And so you're right. He probably sees this as, I'm going to empty the tank more so in the regular season because I needed a team offensively capable of getting me wins and that I needed to pitch and get enough starts to get the wins so that I can get in the next four years the 52 wins that I need and the amount of strikeouts that I still have to, to, to etch in the record books so that I can go down as one of the greatest of all time. If he got what he wants and that's what he wants, that's fine. I think the Mets, if they're expecting what they want, which is a guy that's going to be their horse in the playoffs, at a certain point, there might be a conflict. The path a little more difficult for the Mets to get to the playoffs, though. Oh, like They might have is. to go five-man where the Astros have the luxury of the six-man. Uh, how you feeling, Houston? JV officially gone. He's a New York Met. Therapy couch. How you feeling about... One of the best pitchers in the golden era leaving the Astros. 